As you approach your destination, you spot something unusual. An airport seemingly floating on the water's surface. It's not an illusion. It's Kansai International Airport, Japan's remarkable floating airport. Why build an airport on the water, you might wonder? The reason is quite simple. Japan doesn't have much land to spare. It's a small country with a lot of people, and its landscape is filled with tall mountains and active volcanoes, making big construction projects difficult. So in the 1980s, when Japan needed a new international airport, they came up with an innovative solution. Build it on the sea. They created a huge man-made island in Osaka Bay using millions of tons of rock and sand. On this reclaimed island, they built a state-of-the-art airport, a bold project that took billions of dollars and many years to complete. But there's a problem. The airport isn't just floating, it's sinking. And it's sinking faster than anyone expected. The engineers who designed the airport knew it would sink a bit over time because the soil on the artificial island would settle. However, they miscalculated how fast and how much it would sink. Since it opened in 1994, the airport has sunk more than 11 meters into the water around it. At this rate, it could be at sea level by 2056. This is a serious issue for the airport and its passengers. Why is it sinking so quickly? And what can be done to stop it? These are tough questions that both the airport staff and the public are trying to figure out and finding solutions won't be easy. Situated in Osaka Bay, Kansai International Airport, a marvel of engineering, faces a constant challenge, the relentless pull of the ocean. It opened its doors in 1994, and since then it has sunk about 38 feet into the sea. Originally, the planners thought that Kansai's twin islands would gradually sink over 50 years to rest at a safe 13 feet above the sea. This height was supposed to guard against the structure from being flooded should the seawall fail. But fate had other ideas. Shockingly, within just six years, part of the first island had already reached that 13-foot mark. To prevent further sinking, more than $145 million was dispersed to raise the seawall. However, the future is uncertain, as some forward-thinking engineers are speculating that some sections of these islands may be overflooded and sink another 13 feet to meet the unforgiving sea at eye level by 2056. Yukako Honda, a director of Kansai, which oversees the two man-made islands of Kansai and the mainland's Osaka Itami Airport, shares the interesting backstory. The amount of soil used for Kansai's airport's creation was carefully calculated considering projected ground levels and expected sinking over the next 50 years. Handa recalls the engineer's surprise when the actual sinking rates didn't match the initial laboratory predictions. The story of Kansai's battle against the sea is a testament to the ongoing struggle between humans and nature, a dance for dominance. The story of how Kansai International Airport was built on reclaimed land is very similar to turning a soaked sponge into a solid foundation for the airport structures. Here's how they did it. First, they covered the muddy seabed with a five-foot layer of sand, an essential step to create a strong base. They inserted over two million vertical pipes, with each of them about 16 inches wide into the sandy layer. These pipes help drain excess water from the clay, making the land more stable. The sand in these pipes acted like a thirsty sponge, soaking up water from the surrounding soil. Some projects even used fabric in the pipes, like moisture-absorbing wicks, similar to vertical drains. Interestingly, even after removing the pipes, these drainage channels stayed. Next, they added fresh layers of soil atop the sandy base. They got soil from different places, including Osaka Bay, close by mountains and distant shores like Korea and China, creating a layered landscape. The weight of the new soil pushed more water into the sand or wick layer where it was temporarily stored. The lower layers, dense and impermeable, moved water continuously into the wick. Over time, water rose and was either drained away or evaporated. As the water drained away from the soil, the soil layers compacted, becoming more resistant to deformation. To protect this ambitious project, they built a strong sea wall around the Kansai area. It had 48,000 concrete blocks and debris anchored in massive steel chambers. While this protective wall was being constructed, they continued to fill and dredge the area, 
and the layers rose above the sea levels by 65 feet. During construction, they took breaks to let the newly added land settle and solidify. When the layers reached 13 feet above sea level, a projected height intended to last for 50 years, they implanted 900 columns into the ground. These columns would serve as the solid base for the airport's buildings, and their heights could be adjusted using hydraulic jacks to account for any sinking. In 1987, the Kansai Island project kicked off, but it faced an early challenge three years after when the first island sank 27 feet, surpassing the expected 19-foot mark. This worried the engineers, so they took quick action. Workers went onto the passenger terminal and used hydraulic jacks to raise the columns bit by bit. While the airport still settles, it does so more slowly now. Biannually, diligent engineers adjust the jacks as needed, and each of the 900 columns has a gauge to watch for any tilting. Though we can't be sure how long Kansai will last, an expert from a university in Illinois suggests that by 2023, the second island might just be 13 feet above sea level. If a strong typhoon hits the waves breaching the seawall, the airport building and runways could face the risk of flooding. Beyond the worry about how fast Kansai's islands are sinking, engineers face the challenge of uneven subsidence. Different parts of the Kansai archipelago are rapidly submerging at differing rates. Right at the central area of the passenger terminal on the first island, engineers notice a more noticeable descent in the basement compared to the terminal's edges. To reduce sinking differences elsewhere, they filled the runways with asphalt to reduce cracking and other problems. In the big picture, the massive parking lots and hangars have only a tiny impact on subsidence when compared to the enormous, almost 70 square miles of reclaimed land that make up the islands. According to Yukako Handa, even a fully loaded Airbus A380 with passengers and fuel adds less than a minuscule 0.0025% compared to the weight of the airport. The story of Kansai Airport, which took off in 1984 with an estimated cost of $8 billion, underwent a financial transformation by 2008, reaching a staggering $20 billion. This change prompts an exploration of why such a significant financial risk was taken in building airports on reclaimed land. When cities or organizations embark on the ambitious task of designing or expanding airports, they aim to secure real estate closer to the urban center and its complex transportation links. This desirable land, though expensive and in high demand for various profitable uses, is appealing. Those with vision must consider the financial costs of land acquisition, together with the building processes and also the human and environmental impacts. These include the effects of construction on the environment and the wide-reaching disturbance caused by aircraft noise. Sometimes this also involves the costs associated with compensating and moving the residents and businesses affected by the project to new locations. Amidst these complex and interconnected expenses, builders carefully weigh the economic benefits of the airport. They see creating fresh land off the coast, near a city's vibrant core but away from densely populated areas, as a financially wise long-term solution compared to building airports in residential areas. Kansai Airport was born out of the need to deal with the issue of aircraft noise around Osaka. People in Osaka started protesting and taking legal action as soon as the first aircraft touched down in Osaka in 1964. These actions led to compensation being approved by Japan's highest court. In response, the planners from the Ministry of Transport, who were in charge of creating Kansai Airport, decided to look offshore for three miles. They chose a location where airplanes could take off and land over unpopulated residential areas, giving residents a break from the constant noise. But while trying to solve this complex issue, other options also came up, each with its own challenges. One option was to build a new airport in a different place, whether on solid ground or another artificial island. However, this would have taken a lot of time, resources and land, and would have faced similar environmental and social problems as Kansai International Airport. Another choice was to move the existing airport to a nearby one, like Kobe Airport or Itami Airport. However, this would have reduced Kansai's capacity and convenience and could have caused congestion and noise problems for the other airports. A third option was to give up the airport entirely and focus on other forms of transportation like trains or ferries. 
However, this would have had negative consequences, like harming the regional economy and tourism and wasting the investments made in Kansai International Airport. Managing Kansai has been expensive, but it has successfully connected Osaka to the entire world. Over 25 million passengers used the airport in 2016, and it is one of the 30 most traversed in Asia. As we deal with the challenge of Kansai International Airport sinking, it's clear that there's no single or perfect solution. The best approach may be to adopt a comprehensive and flexible strategy that carefully considers economic, social, and environmental aspects and gets input from various stakeholders. Kansai International Airport is a symbol of human creativity and ambition, but it also reminds us of human vulnerability. Only time will reveal whether it can withstand the forces of nature and time. If you like this video, click on the screen to watch other videos like this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to get notified when we post a new video.